Hello guys, and welcome on back to She's Diabetic. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I have been a type one diabetic for over 20 years. And this is just a channel all about that. My life with type one diabetes. Some tips, some tricks, some hacks, some review videos, which I have for you today, all that sort of thing. So if you're new here, welcome. And if you are returning, welcome on back. So for today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Freestyle Libre 2 Flash Glucose Monitoring System. If you haven't seen, I did a unboxing and first impressions and insertion video, which I will link up above and down below. But if you're just here for information, reviewing the system, the facts, my experience, that sort of thing, you are in the right place. And last thing I will note, if you are looking for specific topics, I've timestamped everything. So if you want to go just for accuracy, I've timestamped it. You can navigate that in the info box below or along the timeline bar. So without further ado, let's get started. First things first, and very important to note, I am not sponsored by Abbott. I have bought this system of my own accord. I actually got it through a free trial system that they offer, which I detail out a little bit more in my unboxing and insertion video. But all thoughts, views, and opinions are completely my own. So. That's out of the way. Very quickly, the Freestyle Libre 2 is a flash glucose monitoring system. It takes readings via a filament that sits under the skin of your interstitial fluid, which very closely mimics and mirrors your blood glucose readings. So there are sort of two devices on the market that do this interstitial fluid monitoring. There's continuous glucose monitors, otherwise known as CGMs, or flash glucose monitors. The Freestyle Libre 2 and the Freestyle Libre 1, in fact, they are both flash glucose monitors, which means you need to swipe the device with the reader or your phone, providing it's NFC compatible, in order to get the data. So it is reading your interstitial fluid every five minutes and storing that data on the sensor, but in order for you to have access to the data, you need to swipe. Whereas a continuous glucose monitor, just to clarify, pushes the information to your reader or phone automatically every five minutes. Now, you'll notice that it's a two. So how does it differ from one, which is its predecessor? There's really only one big difference. And it is quite big, but it's really only one difference. And that is the Freestyle Libre 2 has optional alarms which means it will alarm if your blood glucose is going low or is going high. And it will do this alarming without your needing to initiate a scan. However, if you want to know what the reading is, how low, how high, you need to scan to get that information. So it will alarm saying, hey, you're low, hey, you're high, but it will not tell you what the value of that low or high reading is until you scan it. So Abbott's kind of mantra for this is alarm, scan, act. Alarm goes off, say for example, a low blood sugar, you scan, you realize your blood sugar is say for example, 65, and then you act, which means you take in carbs to treat said low blood sugar. That's it. That is the main difference. Okay, okay, I lied, there's one other difference. The reader is blue and not black. First up, pain on insertion in the insertion process. Pain on insertion, none, absolutely none. It makes a big old sound when you push that sensor in and the needle looks scary and the insertion process I think has been one of the most intimidating factors for a lot of people with this system. But I have never experienced, not with one and not with the two, ever any pain with the insertion of the device. And I find it very, very easy. If you can place something on your skin and push down and pull it back up, you can do this. Basically, if you can place a sticker on your skin, you are capable of doing this. The sound is freaky. It sounds so much worse than it actually is. And when you look at the needle, it looks also very freaky. But again, I have never had a problem with the pain on insertion. So let's talk awareness of the sensor. The sensor is the exact same as one. It's about the size between like a one and a two pound coin. It is exactly the same dimensions as the Freestyle Libre one. 
I am not aware of the sensor at all. I sleep with it, I exercise with it, everything like that. Everything I did, no awareness whatsoever. This also sort of leads into my next point, which is the adhesive or the question of does the sensor stay in place? It really does. The adhesive on this one has been maybe a bit of a controversial point because it bothers or I've heard it bothers a lot of people's skin. That's sort of what people have commented on the comments here, for example. I agree there is a little bit of uh, an irritation to whatever adhesive they use, but my goodness, it is strong. I'm going to insert a clip now of me taking off the sensor after 14 days and you can see the sensor is still firmly in place and it is, it's, it's stuck on. <laughs> okay, so sensor's completed and I just thought I would record the process of me taking the sensor off to show you the adhesive. I've had a little bit of peeling of the sensor, but um, I haven't had any fear of it coming off, that's for sure. So let's see how sticky this thing is. Okay, it's very tacky though. The, the adhesive they use is very, very tacky. Also to show you, that is what the filament looks like. Um, that's not a needle, just you guys know that. But. And that's, that's what remains when it comes off. So the size of the sensor, the adhesive, everything like that, I personally just never had any issues with it whatsoever. Very friendly to live and work and sleep and play with. Not a problem at all. And it's on the back of the arm. I mean, I just forgot I was even wearing it, to be honest with you. Now let's get to a very important part, and that is cost. It is absolutely the exact same cost as the Freestyle Libre 1. Now, from what I understand and doing a little digging on the internet, that is because the Freestyle Libre, especially here in the UK, I don't know about other systems, but has gotten a good amount of coverage within the National Healthcare Service here. And that maintenance of price, I believe, at least here in the UK, and that's where I am right now, by the way, so these figures are gonna be quoted in British pounds. That maintenance of price allows them to maintain their standing within the National Healthcare Service. It neither jumps up nor down. They can just maintain and transition patients from one to two very easily without any monetary implications. Now, I don't know if that's the only reason it's maintained the same price, but I do know that is quite a driving factor, and when I think about it, I can understand why. So, excuse me while I get my notes out. The cost of a sensor is 48.29 British pounds, excluding VAT. So VAT is an added tax here that people can claim back or they don't have to pay if they have a medical exclusion, such as type one diabetes. So 48.29 British pounds, excluding VAT. Given that the system is a 14 day wear, that works out to three pounds and 45 pence per day. And the equivalent real roughly using today's conversion rates is about 70 US dollars a sensor, which puts it at $5 a day for 14 day wear, roughly. I do not know what the cost of this system is in other currencies. If people can chime in down below and let me know, please do. I know in the US it's very difficult to get kind of the rack rate of things because of the complicated nature of the insurance process there. But on the UK, I'm quoting you literally from their site where you can go to their site add to cart and get a sensor, Bob's your uncle, there you go. Now the biggie, the biggie, the biggie, the biggie, and probably a lot of you have jumped straight to that point on the timeline, and that is accuracy. Apparently on the Freestyle Libre 2, they have improved the accuracy and tightened that lag time between what the blood sugar is saying and what the interstitial fluid is, because there is a natural lag time, but apparently, with their new algorithm, this is tightening that time and improving the accuracy. I had very good results with the Freestyle Libre 1, and I had very similar and good results with the Freestyle Libre 2. There were some times where it was a little bit off. I'm going to insert some photos here where I compared it to finger sticks 
and a couple of times I compared it to my Dexcom G6, which is my continuous glucose monitor of choice and the one I use with my T-Slim X2. So that remained on me during the time where I was testing the Freestyle Libre 2. Was it dead on all the time? Absolutely not, but it's pretty, pretty accurate. Do I think it's completely different and improved accuracy from Freestyle Libre 1? In my opinion, no, but that's just been my experience. We all have a different physiology and like a lot of people commented on my Freestyle Libre 1 video that that thing just was not accurate for them at all. You've got to kind of try out the system, test it against finger pricks, and build your own trust or mistrust of the system. But for me, speaking personally, I thought the accuracy was pretty darn good. Not as good as my Dexcom G6, but pretty darn good. So let's go through some pros and some cons. Big pro, I think, is the alarms. I think that is a big pro, especially for people that maybe can't afford or don't want to go on a continuous glucose monitoring system, but they do want to do something, say, like sleep and be alerted if their blood glucose readings are going out of whack. Sleep can be a hugely intimidating time for a lot of type 1 diabetics. You know, am I going to go low overnight? Uh, am I gonna wake up? I mean, it sounds very dramatic, but it's a genuine concern. So the addition of the alarms is really cool. Another pro for me is that you can customize the alarms. So though the alarms are not going to tell you what your value is, you can customize both the high and low levels, and therefore you're not locked to what a system thinks is low or high for you. You are able to customize what you consider low or high and where you consider it being very important that you act within. The maintained accuracy is very good and the maintained price point is very good. Oftentimes when a new product comes on the market, you'll see a jump in price and I'm really pleased that that hasn't happened. I think the sensor looks very neat and tidy. It does not look really medical at all, which is kind of cool. It just is a little white disc that sits on the back of your arm. And uh, I don't know, I like it. And it's easy, easy to use, easy to install, easy to take off. The instructions for insertion are very straightforward. Again, if you wanna see that more in depth, you can look at the insertion and first impressions video that I will link up above and down below. But yeah, I think it's very, very simple to use no matter how technically savvy or unsavvy you are. I don't think there's anything intimidating about this device from that perspective, which I think is a huge plus. So what are the cons? First up, and the biggest one for me, is you only get alarms on the device you initiate your first scan with. That means this device can be used with your phone or with your reader. I had to use it with my reader for the duration of my time with this sensor because I initiated the sensor with the reader, meaning I did my first swipe with the reader and not my phone. That's really strange to me and annoying that you need to initiate with your phone in order to use it, A, both on your phone and your reader, but you also need to initiate it on your phone if you wanna get alerts on your phone. I wish this was just made more clear. After doing it in that unboxing video, a lot of people said, oh yeah, you gotta initiate the first scan with your phone. Well, how was I to know? Okay, fair enough, you can do that moving forward, but I think Abbott should make that very clear from the off in the instruction manual. Now, I didn't peruse the entire, you know, 200 page booklet, but I think it could be more easily and digestibly presented and warned about because I definitely would have used this sensor with my phone exclusively because of my second con, which is that the range of transmission is very small with this device. You really need to have this bad boy in the same room as you preferably kind of on your person. For me, I'm always bebopping all over the house and then maybe sometimes leaving to go run an errand and just to kind of constantly remember this thing was a struggle for me. Whereas my phone, this bad boy is always with me. <laughs> always with me. 
So that being said, you know, if it was more clear that you needed to initiate the first scan on your phone in order to use it with your phone and in order then to get alarms on your phone, I definitely would have scanned initially with this bad boy. And I think been able to get more readings out of the device and more, well, really more alarms out of the device. Because if this isn't in the same room as you, you aren't gonna get those alarms saying you've gone high or low. Other thing to mention about this is it only holds your data for eight hours. So the sensor itself only holds data for eight hours. If you don't scan for say nine hours, you're gonna lose one hour of data off of your graph because it only holds onto the previous eight. And it is great, they do have an alarm on there that will alert you if you haven't scanned for a certain amount of time so as to maintain that, that full data on the graph. But it's, it's definitely a consideration, whereas on other systems you don't necessarily have to worry about that if they're pushing the data to you. So that's an important thing to note for a flash glucose monitoring system such as this. So in closing, my time with Freestyle Libre 2 was rather enjoyable. I have been and continue to be on the Dexcom G6. You can't take me away from that system. I am committed to that system, both because I have the T-Slim, but because I so believe in its accuracy and the quality of that product. That being said, a lot of people ask, whoa, are you coming off your Dexcom G6 for this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Couldn't take me away from my Dexcom G6. However, I did have a lot of people asking my opinion of this sensor and this system and the update on the two version. So I wanted to give that to you guys and I wanted to try it out and share my thoughts with you guys because otherwise I couldn't speak to it. And I wanna be able to answer your questions, especially when they're coming up so, so, so often. So there we go. Those are my thoughts. That's my review of the Freestyle Libre 2 system. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you a little bit more food for thought if you're considering the system or you're comparing a flash glucose monitoring system to a continuous glucose monitoring system. And with that being said, I wish you guys a wonderful day wherever you are in this world. I wish you great blood sugars straight CGM or FGM, flash glucose monitoring lines. But most of all, I wish you a happy, healthy mind with it all. And very good luck on your journey in finding the right system for you. And that truly is the thing. It's all about finding the system that works best for you. It's not about my opinion. It's not about anybody else's opinion down in the comments. You could take those, digest them, but the most important thing is that you find what works best for you. So I wish you good luck with that. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.